Good evening, everyone. This is Robert from RJL518, welcoming you to another exciting edition of Inside Pitch. This is our night game. It's our feature game of the day. Usually the night game is. And we are still on October 3rd, 1985, playing doubleheaders. We had a big American League matchup between the Angels and the Royals this morning. And now tonight, we go to the National League, Jack Murphy Stadium here. We have the Cincinnati Reds taking on the San Diego Padres. This game between the Reds and the Padres is in the exact same situation that the Angels and Royals are in. Earlier on, the Royals took a big win over the Angels and kept their hopes alive to make the playoffs. The same goes in the National League. The Reds at 86 and 71. The Padres at 83 and 75. If Cincinnati wins this game, they clinch the playoff spot and they are in. Actually, if they if they actually if they win both Cincinnati and Houston clinch, the Padres will be out. San Diego must win in order to stay alive in the playoffs. If Cincinnati wins, they are in as well as Houston and the Padres are out. San Diego must win tonight. Same situation that the Royals face themselves in against the Angels this morning. So once again, a gigantic game here in Jack Murphy Stadium. Starting pitcher for the Padres in this game was Andy Hawkins. 18 wins, 8 losses, a 3-1-5 ERA. He gets the call tonight for the Padres. So we're about ready to get started here, top of the first inning. Well, of course, we'll have the National League 10-minute ticker, and then we will decide which games are going to play tomorrow. Leading off for the Reds here will be center fielder Eddie Milner, batted 254 that year in 85. Fans here at Jack Murphy Stadium, it is a sellout crowd. They know what's at stake. Padres must win or they are out. First pitch from Hawkins. And that's a 2-3, and that's a walk chance. The 15 is high. Jack Murphy Stadium takes away two from walks and two from strikeouts. It does can be a bit of a hitter's park. Milner will swing 3-5, and he flies out to right. Next batter for the Reds, a very young left fielder, Paul O'Neill. Paul O'Neill gets the call. Now, the thing about this Reds lineup, it's a little wacky. Remember, historically, the Reds are already out of it at this time. Okay, so they we were usually now getting uh, batters into lineups that usually wouldn't hit. But this is a play. But to us here, since we have more playoff teams, these games do matter. Paul O'Neill gets the call. Only had 12 bats in 85 for the Reds. Batted 333. A very young Paul O'Neill before he went to the Yankees. Pitch from Andy Hawkins. That's a 4-4. That's a blank. O'Neill does get to swing 2-3, and he grounds out to short. And that is out number two. Here's the right fielder, Dave Parker. Parker batted 3-12, 34 homers for the Reds that year. Hawkins will pitch. That's a 3-4. That's a strikeout chance. The 18 is high. Parker gets to swing 3-1, and he pops out to second. And a 1-2-3 inning for Hawkins. Nothing there for Cincy. We go to the bottom of the first. Starting pitcher for the Reds in this game was Jay Tibbs. 10 wins, 16 losses, a 3-9-2 ERA. Bob's Tabletop Sports and Steeler fan joins us here at Jack Murphy Stadium. Reds and Padres. The, Red, the Padres historically won this game 9-4. There were 18 hits total in the game, and there was an error. But once again, Jay Tibbs seems to get the call almost every time I've done the Reds. I think I've done four or five games where Tibbs is pitched. Leading off for the Padres in the bottom of the first will be second baseman Tim Flannery, 281 average for the for the Padres in this must-win game for San Diego. Tibbs will pitch. 3-5, that's a blank. Flannery will swing 3-4, and he grounds it to first. 
That is out number one. Here's the right fielder, Tony Gwynn. Gwynn batted 317 and 85. Of course, one of the best hitters in history. Tibbs will pitch. That's a 2 6, and that is a strikeout chance. The 15 is high. Gwynn will swing 3 1, and it's a base hit pass first. And Gwynn will get the first base on a single. Nice hit for Gwynn. Here's the first baseman, Steve Garvey. 17 home runs in 85, a 281 average. Infield does go halfway. Check the strat. Nothing happening there. Tibbs will pitch. And that is a 6-5 strikeout. Six is too high. Garvey has a six, but minus two from the stadium makes it a four. So Garvey does not strike out. He does get the swing. 4-1, and that's going to be a base hit pass short, a single for Garvey. Does Tony Gwynn make it to third? The answer is no. He needs to be a five in his base running rating. It's only a four, and he will hold at second. Two straight base hits in a game the Padres must absolutely have to have. Here's third baseman Greg Nettles. Nettles had 15 homers, 261 average that year. Padre, Reds win and they're in. Padres lose and they're out. Tibbs will pitch to Nettles. We'll check a strat roll first. And that is a four. And that is nothing happening there. Gwynn will pitch. I'm oh, sorry, Tibbs will pitch, not Gwynn. Tibbs will pitch, 6-4. That's a home run question mark. Nettles is a lefty, a 1-11, to 11, that's a 10, it passes. Nettles, a 1-14 to 14 to hit a home run. Does Nettles hit it and give the Padres a three-run lead? Yes, he does. That ball is high, that ball is deep. That ball was smacked into center field. It is gone. Greg Nettles, a three-run homer. Jay Tibbs makes a big mistake, and Nettles takes advantage of it. He pitches him a grapefruit. Nettles turns it into fruit salad. Three to nothing Padres on a three-run jack by Nettles. Padres get off to a good start. But we know how it, but we know, but here at RJL 518, we know it's not how you start, it's how you finish. Take a look at this morning's game. Here's the catcher, Terry Kennedy. He'll bat up next. The Padres grab a 3-0 lead here in the bottom of the first. Tibbs with the pitch. 1-5. That's at the park. Jack Murphy Stadium says 5-2. And that is a ball hit to right field. That is a 5. And that's going to be a single for Terry Kennedy. Kennedy smacks a base hit. Into right field, and he will hold. So after getting a quick out, Tibbs is now allowed four base hits, three singles, and a homer. As the Padres know, they need to get runs. Here is the left fielder, Carmelo Martinez, 21 homers that year. Infield goes back to halfway. Checking on the strat. That is a one, nothing happening. Tibbs will pitch. And that's a 3-4, double question mark. Martinez, a righty, only on a 1, it's a single. That's a 9, it's too high. Martinez will swing, 5-5, five, five, and he grounds it to short. Double play rating 2, 0, 3. Second base for the Reds is Oster, no adjustment. A 1-3, to three, they turn the double play. And they don't. Terry Kennedy will be thrown out at second. And Martinez makes it to first. Two outs. On the fielder's choice. Next up, center fielder Kevin McReynolds. 15 home runs, 234 average for the Padres that year. Infield is now two outs. Nothing on nothing on the strat. There is not going to be a hit and run. Tibbs will pitch. 
And that is a 1-3 error on a grounder. McReynolds will swing 2-4. That's a ball hit to center field. That is a 16 against a righty. It's just going to be a fly out to center as it's too high and the inning is over. Three runs for the Padres on four hits. After one, the Friars have jumped out to a 3-0 lead. Top of inning number two, leading off of the Reds will be Nick Asaski. He is at first base for this game today. Hawkins will pitch, and that's a 5-6. Range play at the park. Jack Murphy Stadium, 3-3. That is a home run to the pull side. Let's first check the homer. Asaski against the righty is a 20, and that's an automatic home run. Not a problem there. It is gone. Of course, there's no range play on that, as Asaski sends this one into center field, and the Reds get one back. Solo home run by Asaski gets the Reds on the board. And it is now 3-1. to one. Next batter, the third baseman, Wayne Krenchicki. He had a batter in the 272 average that year in 85. G. Puck joins us here at Jack Murphy Stadium. Hawkins will pitch. That's a 1-6. It's a blank. Krenchicki gets the swing. 3-6. Star 3. He flies out to center. First out. Here's second baseman Ron Oster. I love his name. Ron Oster. 295 average that year in 85. Where are all my Reds fans? Where's Brandon Baker, Philip Reynolds, Dave Little? Come on, where are all my Reds fans? Jeez. <clears throat> Hawkins will pitch. And that is a 5-5. Five, five. That's a strikeout. Five got him. Struck him out. Strikeout number one for Hawkins. He had 69 of them in 85. Two men down. Here's the catcher, Dave Van Gorder. And my mom will get that one. <clears throat> Dave Van Gorder's the catcher tonight. Batted 238 average in 85. Hamlin will pitch. I'm sorry, that Hamlin. Thanks a lot. You said Hamlin. I was looking at you there, Gene Bucks. said Hamlin. I said Hamlin's not pitching. He's racing. Here's Hawkins because you're doing red, white, and blue. Hawkins will pitch. Hamlin. 1 6. That's a blank. Van Gorder. Or maybe Dale Jarrett will swing. I don't know. 5-1. That's a base hit. Van Gorder gets a single. And Van Gordon's going to turn left. And he's going to hold there at first base on a single for Van Gorder. Base hit. Nice hit for Van Gorder. And coming on is the shortstop, Tom Runnels. He didn't get much play, but he is the shortstop in this game. So Runnels will pitch. He only batted 200. Infield is normal. I will still roll the strat. Nothing happening. Hawkins will pitch. That's a 5-4 against the switch hitter. That's going to be an automatic out. And Runnels, it's a ground, it's a star four and a ground out to third. And the inning ends there. One run for the Reds on two hits. A solo shot by a Sasky. Bottom of the second coming up. Leading off for the Padres is shortstop Mario Ramirez. He gets the call here today. As a member, it was late in the year, and these two teams historically were out of it. But in my replay, they are very much in it. So it's going to be interesting to see how these two hodgepodge lineups actually do against each other in a game that does mean something. That's what makes adding more, that's what makes adding more playoff teams even more fun. You really don't know what's going to happen. Tibbs will pitch, 
And that is a 6-5 strikeout. 14 is high. Ramirez will swing. 6-4. Base hit. Pass short. It is a single. Padres are hitting Tibbs hard. That is already the fifth hit by the Padres. They had 10 of them in the, in the actual game. Here's the pitcher, Andy Hawkins. He batted 078 as a hitter. Infield will go halfway. And that is a 12. Nothing happening on the strat. Tibbs will pitch to Hawkins, and there's no... Um, is there a bunt attempt? Uh, yes, there is. Hawkins is going to bunt instead. So the bunt is on. Tibbs will pitch. That is a 4-4. It is a strikeout on a bunt. It's halved. 14 divided by 2 is 7. Minus 2 is a 5. That's a 12. Hawkins will not bunt, will not strike out. He does get to swing on the bunt, and that is bunted to third base. I'm going to say the corners are in automatically since the pitcher comes in to bunt. That is bunted to third. It won't matter. That is a one, and that is a great bunt, and it's going to be successful. Ramirez will go to second, and Hawkins is thrown out at first. The bunt works to perfection, and Ramirez gets into scoring position. Sacrifice hit, and that was hit to third. Bunt was perfect. And now Tim Flannery comes up with a runner on second for the Padres. Flannery is 0 for 1. Tibbs will check see a strat roll on this. 14, nothing happening. Tibbs will pitch. That's a 3-3. It's a blank. Flannery gets the swing. 2-3. Ground ball to short. Throw goes to first for out number two. Ramirez, the only, uh, a one to three, he'll make it to third. And he doesn't. He'll have to stay at second. So two outs. Now with the runner at second base. And here's Tony Gwynn with a big chance. Gwynn is one for one in a single his last time up. I do watch NASCAR myself here also. I will be watching the Daytona 500. And my favorite driver was Jeff Gordon. I uh, always loved the guy. Loved him ever since he broke into NASCAR. Met him once on a NASCAR cruise. Right now, my favorite driver would be Chase Elliott. Jay Tibbs will pitch to Gwynn. Looking forward to the Daytona 500. That is a 20. Tibbs turns around. Throws to second. Too hot, not in time. Ramirez gets back. Yeah, I have no problem with Joey Logano. He's a bit of a putz, but he, I, he's all right. I have no issues with him. Tibbs will pitch to Gwynn. And that's a 1-1 walk chance. And that walk is too high. That six is high. Gwynn is a seven, but minus two from the stadium is a five. Gwynn will swing 2-6, but he grounds it to first to end the inning. No runs and a hit for the Padres. At the end of two, still 3-1, Friars. But yes, I love NASCAR. Always have, even though unfortunately I hate some of the rules changes they did. But I liked it when NASCAR was just the original rules changes. This playoff crap really to me is garbage. And because of the playoff crap, because of the playoff new system, Jeff Gordon was robbed two extra uh, championships because of it. <clears throat> because of the playoff system, he would have had six titles instead of four. I'm happy he got the four, but he would have gotten six titles if it wasn't for the playoff new stuff, which I really don't like. Top of the third inning, Jay Tibbs will lead off for the Reds as the pitcher. He batted 092 that year. <clears throat> Hawkins, 4-2. That's a walk chance. The 14 is high. He's not going to walk Tibbs. Here's the Tibbs will swing, though. 6-3, and he grounds it to short. And that is out number one. 
Next up is Eddie Milner. Milner flew out his last time up. Hawkins, 3-4, strikeout, 10 is too high. Milner does get the swing, and that's a 1-5. It's a star one, and he grounds it to second. That is out number two, and here's Paul O'Neill. O'Neill will pitch to Hawkins. Oh, oh. The other way around, Hawkins will pitch to O'Neill. Uh, I've been doing this too long. Hawkins will pitch. 6-4. That's a range play. O'Neill gets the swing. 4-5. That's a base hit to left field. But the ball there is a range play. Carmelo Martinez's range is a three. Does he take away a hit? Yes, he does. Carmelo Martinez gets there a little fast, but he makes the catch, and the inning is over. One, two, three, go the Reds. Bottom of the third coming up. Leading off for the Padres will be Garvey. Garvey singled his last time up. He's one for one. Tibbs looking on. Now he'll pitch. That's a 3-4. Double question mark. That 15 is high for both sides. It'll be a blank. Garvey will swing. 4-5 and he flies out the right. Out number one. And now here's Greg Nettles, who gets a nice cheer from the JMS crowd. He hit a three-run jack his first time up, which put the Padres ahead three to one, three to nothing, until the Reds got one back. C and D Baseball TV with Tony Porter joins us here at Jack Murphy Stadium. Tibbs will pitch to Nettles. Tibbs, a 6-3. That's a blank. Nettles gets the swing. 5-4. Star 4. That's a ground ball to first. That is out number 2. Since Tony always likes to root for the Mets, like I do, of course, and my Mets lost last night on this board against the Cardinals. But in this game here there, Tony, uh, the Reds win and they're in. Padres lose and they're out. So that's this. That's the importance of this game tonight. Here's Kennedy. Kennedy singled his last time up. Tibbs will pitch. 3-1, wild pitch, ball one. Tibbs will do it again. 4-5, that's at the park. Jack Murphy Stadium says 6-3. That's going to be a base hit to right field, but Kennedy is going to try for two. So Kennedy comes around first. His base running rating is a one. The right fielder is Parker. And it's a minus one, so he has no chance to go to second base. It's an automatic help. He will automatically be held, and he'll turn around and stay at first. It is a single. Two out base knock by Kennedy, and it will give Carmelo Martinez a chance here. Still two outs. Padres leading 3-1 in a game they must win. Check the strat, and that is an eight. Nothing happening. Tibbs will pitch, and that's a two-six. Strikeout, 12 is high. Martinez will swing. Six-five. Ball hit the center field. That is an eight. Against a righty, it's going to be too high, and it's going to be a fly out to center. Oh, Martinez could have got just got under it a little bit, but he just misses it, and the inning ends there. No runs and a hit. For the Padres, still three to one after three. We go to the top of the fourth inning. Here is Dave Parker leading off for the Reds. Parker is 0 for 1, popped out last time up. First time up, as you say. Let's see. Hawkins has 29 batters, so he would be there. Tibbs is 26, and that would be there. Hawkins will pitch to Parker, and that's a 3-2 against a lefty. Walk plus, and that 8 
will do it. It will walk Parker. Hawkins gives up a walk. He had 57 of them in 85. That's the first walk he's given up in this game. Puts the leadoff man on base. And here's Nick Asaski. Asaski hit a home run his first time up. He's one for one. Hawkins will look. Infield goes halfway. We'll check the strat. And that is an 18. Uh, that could be a possible bunt, but I'll pull it off. No need to bunt here. Hawkins will pitch to Asaski. And that's a 2-1. That's a blank. Asaski gets the swing. 4-1. Star 6. Fly out the right. As Gwen will make the catch. Out number 1. Next up is Wayne Krenchicki. He's 0 for 1. Still checking the strat. And that is a 17. Again, nothing happening. I'm not going to bunt with Krenchicki on the at the plate at 272. Hawkins will go ahead and pitch. That's a 2-2. Two -two. Again, that's a blank. Krenchicki gets the swing. 2-1. Ground ball to second. Do they get the double play? 2 3 Four, shortstop is, Ramir is Ramirez, and that is no adjustment. A one to four, they turn it. Yep, they got it. Second base to shortstop, back to first, double play, inning over. Actually, it's, yeah, second base, shortstop. Andy Hawkins gets the twin killing. So no runs and a hit for the Reds. I'm sorry, no, it's I'm, a walk. I'm sorry, no runs, no hits, no errors. There was a walk. Bottom of the fourth coming up. <clears throat> Leading off for the Friars will be Kevin McReynolds, future Met. McReynolds is 0 for 1. Tibbs will pitch. And that's a 6-3, that's a blank. McReynolds will get the swing. 5-5. Five, five. He grounds it to third. Out number one. And here is Mario Ramirez. He had a base hit his last time up. He's one for one. Tibbs looking on. And here's the pitch. That's a 2-1. That's a range play at the park. Murphy Stadium, 5-2. That's a ball at the right field. And a, that is a 20, and it's too high. But we have a range play. The ball is hit to right, and that is Parker. His range is a three. And he doesn't make it. Is it a single or a double? That's going to be a single for Ramirez. Ramirez still gets a base hit out of it. As he hits it right in front of Parker, Parker can't catch up to it. He'll take it on the bounce, and that will be a single for Ramirez. Padres get a man on, and here is Andy Hawkins. He bunted his last time up. We'll see if that comes up again. Infield halfway. Is the bunt on an 11? The answer is no, it is not. Hawkins will swing. The corners are in, expecting a bunt. But I'm going to keep the corners in, although they expected it halfway. So let's see what happens here. Because the defense doesn't know what Hawkins is going to do. Tibbs will pitch. And that's a 1-5. That's at the park. Murphy Stadium says 5-6. And that's going to be a base hit to center with a possible double. Ramirez automatically takes third with automatic two outs. Hawkins is going to try, has to try for two. Base running rating is a one. Ball is set to Milner in center field, and his arm is a minus one. It's a zero. Hawkins cannot do it. He will hold it first. In this case, because of the minus one on both arms, the runner at first does not get thrown out at second. He does, however, get the hit. Hawkins gets a base hit thanks to Jack Murphy Stadium. And Ramirez is on at third. <clears throat> now the batter is Tim Flannery. Flannery does hit into some ground into double plays. They're going to play the infield halfway and try to turn it. 
for the Reds. Runners at first and third here, bottom of the fourth. A chance for the Padres. As Philip Reynolds joins us here at Jack Murphy Stadium. Checking the strat, 17. Uh, ooh, do I do a squeeze, squeeze play? Nah, I'll let Flannery hit. No need to do a squeeze here. Runners at first and third. Tibbs will pitch. Tribe fan joins us here at Jack Murphy Stadium. Tibbs with the pitch. 3-3. Three, three. It's a blank. Flannery gets the swing. 6-5 against the righty. Base hit. Pass first. It's a single. Ramirez comes in to score. On a single to first, Hawkins' base running rating is a 1. Needs to be a 2 in order to get to third. He will hold at second. And Flannery has an RBI single. And it's now 4-1 to one Padres. As Philip Reynolds does not like the score, I'm sorry about that, but hmm, Padres now lead at 4-1, to RBI single by Flannery, and now the batter is Tony Gwynn. Reds win and they're in, Padres win and they're still alive, Padres lose, they're out, and if the Padres lose, both the Reds and the Astros will clinch the, play the last two playoff berths. The only thing I'll be up for grabs will be seating. Other than that, though, this is an elimination game for the Padres. Gwynn is one for two. Infield still halfway. That's an 18. Nothing happening. Tibbs will pitch. That's a 2-6. And it is a strikeout three. Too high. Gwynn is a four, but minus two is a two. Gwynn does not strike out often, and he won't do there. He does get to swing, though. That's a 5-6, and it's a fly out the left. Uh, Gwen just misses that one, and that is out number two. And here's Steve Garvey. Infield goes back to normal. Checking on the strat. That's an 18. No, no play. Tibbs will pitch to Garvey. And that's a 5-6, and that's a strikeout chance. Five too high. Garvey gets the swing. That's a 6-4, and that's a star five and a ground ball to third. And the inning ends there. One run for the Padres on three hits. After four, four to one in favor of the Friars. We go to the top of the fifth inning. Leading off for the Reds will be Ron Oster. Oster is 0 for 1. In this big game here at Jack Murphy Stadium in the National League. <clears throat> Hawkins, 3-4. Strikeout chance, 16 is high. Oster will swing, 5-3, and he grounds it to second. So far, a nice job by Hawkins, minus the home run he gave up to Asaski. Here's Dave Van Gorder. Van Gorder hit a single last time up, one for one. Hawkins with the pitch, 1-6. It's blank. Van Gorder will swing, 1-4. He flies out the left. Two away. And next up is Tom Runnels. Tom Runnels gets the swing. He only had a 200 average that year. He is in the lineup. A lot of these hodgepodge lineups late in the year. Of course, both these teams were out of it at that time historically, but they are in it here. Hawk Hawkins will pitch. 3-4, strikeout chance, 17 high. Runnels gets the swing, 1-5. He grounds it to third, and the inning is over. One, two, three inning by Hawkins, halfway through the game, four to one, Friars. Remember, we'll have 10-minute ticker, and we will choose and we will choose tomorrow's doubleheader for October 4th. 
depending on what happens in the National League 10-minute ticker. Pretty much we've already decided what the game from the American League will be, but we'll talk about that later. Bottom of the fifth inning, leading off will be Greg Nettles. Nettles had a three-run jack in the game in the first inning, and he is now one for two. <clears throat> Tibbs will pitch to Nettles, and that's a 5-1 hit by pitch. Five is too high. Nettles gets the swing, 3-5, and he flies out the left. That is out number one. And now here's Terry Kennedy. Kennedy having a good game. He's two for two. Two singles. Tibbs with the pitch. 6-4. That is a home run question mark. Kennedy a lefty. 1-11. to That's a four. It passes. Against a righty, he has a nine. A 1-9. to Kennedy goes yard. Too high. Kennedy will swing for six, and he flies out deep to left field. Very high, very deep, but very caught by Paul O'Neill out there. Two outs. And now here's Carmelo Martinez. Martinez is 0 for 2. Tibbs will pitch to Martinez. Pitch from Tibbs, and that's a 3-3. That is a blank. Martinez gets the swing. 6-6. Six, six. That's a ball at the center field. That is a 17, and against the righty, it's just going to be a fly out to center. It's way too high, and that's a 1-2-3 inning for Tibbs. That's not the first time Martinez has missed that on a question mark hit in the, into the outfield, and he misses that one again. One, two, three inning for Tibbs. After five, four to one Padres. We go to the top of the sixth. Jay Tibbs is due to bat, but he's only got two batters left before he's tired. The Reds are going to take him out. So that will be it for Tibbs. The Reds will go to the bench. And let's see who they want to bring in to bat. And it will be they will go with Dave Concepcion. Concepcion will come on to bat against Andy Hawkins here to start the top of the to start the top of the sixth inning. Hawkins will pitch to him. And that is a 4-6. That's at the park. Jack Murphy Stadium says 1-3. That is a star three and a fly out to center. So Concepcion goes, goes down. And once now, once again, a chance for Eddie Milner. Milner is 0 for 2. One out. Hawkins with the pitch. 2-1. That's a blank. Milner gets the swing, 4-5 against the righty, chops it right back to Hawkins. He's got it, underhands at the first, out number two. And the next batter is Paul O'Neill. <clears throat> O'Neill is 0 for 2, a very young Paul O'Neill, of course, before he goes to the Yankees later. Hawkins will pitch to O'Neill, and that is a 1-3. That's a blank. O'Neill gets the swing, 3-3. Three, three. That's going to be a double to left field. Paul O'Neill comes through with a double, and the Reds get a man on second. Two out, base knocked by O'Neill. He will hold at second base. And now a big chance for Dave Parker. Parker is 0 for 1, popped out and walked. Infield is normal, still rolling the strat. That is a 4, nothing happening. Hawkins will pitch to Parker. Pitch from Hawkins, 5-4 against the lefty, automatic out. That's going to be a star 4, a ground ball to 3rd, and the inning ends there. 
No runs and a hit for the Reds. Padres still lead 4-1. to one. Going into the bottom of the sixth. Three right-handers do in a row for the Padres. I believe the Reds will bring in a right-hander to pitch. And I have a funny feeling it is going to be Tom Hume. I usually go with him. Tom Hume will come into pitch. Three and five, three saves, a 3-2-6 ERA. Tom Hume will pitch to Kevin McReynolds here to start at the bottom of the sixth. Padres leading 4-1, to one, a game they must win. Hume will pitch 5-3, and against the righty, strikeout plus, got him, struck him out. He strikes out McReynolds, one down. Next up is Mario Ramirez. He's two for two tonight. Hume gets the call. There's the pitch, a 5-1 against the righty. That's a strikeout chance. The 10 is good. He struck him out. Ramirez is a 12, minus 2 is a 10, and he got him. Second strikeout for Hume. And now the batter is Andy Hawkins, and they're going to let him swing. Hawkins is pitching very well. They're going to keep they're going to keep they're going to let him swing here. They want to see if they can get at least one more inning out of Andy before going to the bullpen. Hume will pitch. 4-4, strikeout 5 got him. And that and Tom Hume strikes out the side. An easy 1-2-3 inning for Tom Hume as he pitches very well there. At the end of six, still four to one, Friars. Top of the seventh coming up. Hawkins will come out to pitch. And here's Nick Asaski leading off for the Reds. Asaski one for two. He had the home run in the second inning. The Padres are going to stick with Hawkins, although the bullpen is ready to go. Pitch from Hawkins, 1-4. That's a double question mark. That 17 is going to be too high for either side. Asaski will swing. That's a 6-6 six, six. against a righty. It's a fly out to right. Asaski flies out, and that's out number one. Here's Wayne Krenchicki. He is 0 for 2. Hawkins dials it in. That's a 4-6. It's at the park. Jack Murphy Stadium says 6-1. Base hit. Center field. A single for Krenchicki. Reds get a one-out single. Infield will go halfway. The batter will be Ron Oster. Still rolling a strat. And that is a 17. Nothing happening. Hawkins will pitch to Oster. Hawkins, 6-1. That's a blank. Oster gets the swing. 1-2. That's a base hit to left field. It is a single. Krenchicki's base running rating is a 1. A ball hit to left field. Minus 2 to get to third. Minus 1. O'Neal's a minus 1 arm. There's no way Krenchicki can even try to go to third. He will stay at second. But the tying run coming to the plate. Two quick singles. And now the Reds have something going on. The batter is Dave Van Gorder. Gorder is one for two. Can Hawkins get out of the jam is the question. Do I want um, Do I want to keep him out there from the Padres? Ugh. I'm going to go with him. Hawkins will pitch to Van Gorder. Infield is halfway, four to one. Strat says a 17, nothing happening. Van Gorder's not going to bunt with runners at first and second when you need base runners. Hawkins will pitch. That's a 1-2. 
Air on a throw. Van Gorder will swing. 5-2. It's a fly ball to right field. Fly ball to right field. <clears throat> and that is out number two. Krenchicki's base running rating is a one. The only way he can the only way he can get to third is on a one. A six six, he's out. And he'll hold at second base. Two outs. And of course, there's no throwing error on the fly out. Although, if a throw was to be made, I would have rolled for the flow. I would have rolled for the throwing error. So now Van Gorder flies out, and now it's up to Tom Runnels. Runnels will swing. It's early. I don't make position changes yet until about the eighth inning. Four to one. Runners at first and second. Two outs now. Reds trying to maybe get a big hit here. Strat says an 18. Nothing happening. Hawkins will pitch. That's a 5-3. It's at the park. Jack Murphy Stadium says 4-4. Four, four, and it's going to be a base hit to right field. It is a single. Question is, does it score Quen Krenchicki? His base running rating is a 1, but with 2 outs because it becomes a 2. Single to right field. Single to right, plus one is a three. Right fielder for Gwynn is a zero. A one to three, Krenchicki will score. Four or five, he holds. Six, someone's out. If it's a six-one or a six-six, Krenchicki still scores, but a trailing runner is out. It's a five, he will hold at third. Krenchicki will not come in to try to score. And the bases are loaded. A base hit for Runnels. And now we'll see a pinch hitter for Tom Hume as the Reds will go to the bench. Base is loaded. Let's see if they're going to bring up. They have to go with most at bats, and that's going to be Buddy Bell. 560 at bats. Buddy Bell, of course, a late trade from Texas late in the year. Four to one. Buddy Bell has a chance to maybe bring Hawkins, bring in a run or two. There's still two outs. They're going to let him pitch. Hawkins trying to get this inning over with. Bases loaded. Jam with Reds. I am rolling a strat. That is a 14. Nothing happening. Hawkins will pitch. That's a four six. Again, it's at the park. Jack Murphy Stadium says 2-1. It's a ground ball to short. Ball is picked up there by Ramirez. He will throw to second to get Runnels, and the inning is over. No runs, three hits for the Reds. A big chance goes by the board for them. We are at the seventh inning stretch. Padres lead four to one. Sing your take me out to the ball game. I will be right back. We go to the bottom half of the seventh. Padres leading four to one. Reds need a pitcher. Padres have left, left, right coming up. So I think they'll bring in a lefty. Let's see who they're going to go with. It's not really a closing situation. What do you want to do here? I think, you know what? 
I think the Reds will go with Joe Price. Two wins, two losses, a save, a 3-9-0 ERA. Joe Price will pitch. Leading off for the Padres will be Tim Flannery. Flannery, one for three here. Bottom of the seventh. Padres win, and they're still alive. Lose, they're out. Reds win. They clinch a playoff spot. Price with the pitch. 2-1. Wild pitch. Ball one. Price will do it again. 1-4. Strikeout. Four is got him. Struck him out. Flattery's a six. Minus two is a four. He gets him. Fourth straight strikeout by Reds pitching. Because Hume struck out the side in the sixth. Here's Tony Gwynn. Gwynn is one for three. Price, 4-2 against the lefty. It's a blank. Gwynn will swing, 2-3, grounds out to short. Out number two. And next up is Steve Garvey. Garvey is one for three, singled in the first inning. Price looking on, pitch on the way, 4-6. Home run question mark against a righty, a 1-12. That's an 11. It clears. Garvey against the lefty is a 1 to 15. A 1 to 15. Garvey hits this out of here. No, it's a 20. It's too high. Oh, wow. He misses a homer, but he does get the swing. And that's going to be a 4 2. And he just chops it the first inning over. Oh, Garvey knows he had one to hit, and he slams the bat into the ground. He is mad. One, two, three inning for Price. Still four to one Padres. We go to the top of the eighth. Top of the order for the Reds. Eddie Milner leads off. Hawkins is coming out. He is he is done. And we'll see a new pitcher for the Padres. And a timeout as I just knocked all my cards over. So give me a moment here to reset. <sighs> Hate it when it does that. Okay, so Hawkins is coming out. Padres will go to the bat, but bullpen. You got three lefties, so I think the Padres will go with a left-hander. And let's see what's going to be. And it will be Craig. It will be Craig Lefferts. Seven wins, six losses, two saves, three three five ERA. Lefferts will pitch to Eddie Milner to start here. The top of the eighth. Milner is 0 for 3. Lefferts with the pitch. 3-3 three, three at the park. Getting a lot of ballpark readings today. Jack Murphy Stadium says 2-4. Question mark 7. Balls at the left field. That is a 17. Too high. It's going to be a fly out the left. Milner just gets under it. And it goes into the glove of Martinez. Out number 1. Here's Paul O'Neill. O'Neill is one for three with a double. Lefferts with the pitch. 5-5 five, five against the lefty. Strikeout. 17 is high. O'Neill will swing. 1-3. Star five. He grounds it to short. Out number two. And here's now Parker. Parker's 0 for, 0 for 2. He did walk in the game. Lefferts will pitch to Parker. That's a 4-6. That's a blank. Parker gets the swing. 4-5. And he grounds it to first base. Inning over. A 1-2-3 inning for Lefferts. The Padres, in this rapidly moving game, they lead 4-1 going into the bottom of the eighth.
Let's see that for that light. Greg Nettles is the leadoff batter for the Padres. Joe Price is going to stay out there. Actually, he's not. Pop Price is going to come out of the game, and the Reds are going to go ahead and bring in another lefty. And they will go with Joe with John Franco, who, in my opinion, should also be in the Hall of Fame. 12 wins, 3 losses, 12 saves, a 2-1-8 ERA. John Franco definitely in the Hall of the Very Good. And you know what? If you're going to put in Billy, if they still want to think about putting Billy Wagner, before you put in Billy Wagner Hall of Fame, you better put John Franco and K-Rod in there. Francisco Rodriguez. So John Franco will come out to pitch. <clears throat> His job is simple. Keep it four to one. Greg Nettles will lead off. Franco will pitch. That's a six one against the lefty. Automatic out. Star five. It's a ground ball to first. Out number one. John Franco, as much as he would go, if he did go in the Hall of Fame, as much as I would love him seeing wearing a Mets cap, he would probably be wearing a Reds cap. Franco will pitch to Kennedy. 2-6 against the lefty. That's an automatic out. And it's a star four. It's a ground out to short. Franco doing his job. Two outs. And now Carmelo Martinez. Martinez is 0 for 3. Franco will pitch to him. Two outs, bottom of the eighth. Franco's pitch. That's a 2-2. Two -two. That's a blank. He's not tired. Martinez gets the swing. 6-5. A ball at the center field again. A question mark 8. That's a 2. This time he gets it. That's going to be a single for Martinez. Finally gets a base hit that way. He'll go to first. Martinez hit those areas. The question mark eight twice. Didn't get it. Now he does. Base hit for Martinez. And now here's K-Mac. McReynolds is 0 for 3. Still two outs. Am I rolling the strat? No. Franco will pitch. And that's a 6-3. Double question mark. McReynolds is a righty. A 1 to 10 is a single right up the middle. That's a 4. It's a base hit for McReynolds. Martinez base running rating is a 3 with 2 outs. And he will, but he will still not make it to 3rd. He will have to hold it 2nd. Needs to be a 4 to get there. So after 2 quick outs, now 2 quick base hits. And here's Mario Ramirez. He will swing. Ramirez is two for three tonight for the Padres. <clears throat> four to one. There is no strat, and that means the Reds are also in runner safe mode on balls hit to the outfield. Franco will pitch. Three one. Range play. Ramirez gets the swing. Three five. It's a base hit to center field. That's a range play, though. The ball is hit to Milner. His range is a four. He's got it and makes the catch. Oh, that takes a run. That probably just took a run off the board, and the inning is over. What a play by Milner to make it. And it keeps it a four-to-one game. Side retired. Will we see some ninth inning magic? Four to one Padres. The leadoff batter is Nick Asaski. Craig Lefferts coming out. The Padres will go to their closer. And that, of course, is Goose. And it is Rich Gossage. Five wins, three losses, 26 saves, a 182 ERA. The Goose is loose. Goose Gossage will pitch to Nick Asaski. He'll lead off the top of the ninth. Padres win. They're still alive. 
Reds trying to end the Padres' season. Gossage will pitch. And that's a 3-3. That's a range play. As Soski gets to swing. 1-1. One, one. A double into center field, but it's a range play. The ball is hit to McReynolds. His range is a 3. Nope, he won't get it. That's going to be a leadoff double for Asaski. Reds get the leadoff man on. Asaski has a home run and now a double and a runner at second base. What? Did you expect a 1 2 3 ninth inning at RJL 518? I think not. Next batter is Wayne Krenchicki. He will bat Asaski on at second. There is no strat, but the pod, but the but the Reds are in runner safe mode, which means that on a ball into the outfield, I can make a choice if I want to send the runner or not. Asaski on second. Gossage will pitch to Krenchicki. Gossage with the pitch. 3-5. Strikeout 11. Too high. Krenchicki gets the swing. 6-2. Ground ball to first. And that is going to be out number one. That will move Asaski to third. One out. Here's Ron Oster. He will bat at 295. Oster's one for three. Padres are playing back. The runner at third doesn't mean anything. They just want to make sure they get the out. Gossage will pitch to Oster. There's no strat. Gossage, 5-6. Error on a throw. Oster will swing. That's a 4-6. It's a ground ball to second base. The ball is hit to Flannery. His error rating is a 7. That's a 3. It's going to be an error on Flannery. That is a one base error on Flannery. An E4. What a time for that to come up. Flannery throws it wide, error rating on a throw. That's going to be, now the question is, now we already know that a Sasky scores, does Oster take the next base? Does Oster take the next base? It's first of all, it's up to Garvey, his range is a three. And he does not prevent the ball going back. Oster's base running rating is a three, a one to three. He goes to second, and he does not. Oster stays at first. Holy cow. But the run scores. It's now four to two. Wow, what a time for that to happen. An E4, and that is the first error on the Padres. The next batter is Dave Van Gorder. We'll probably see a pinch hitter for him, even though he's one for three. Oster on it first. What a time for that error to occur. Four to two on an error on a throw. But Oster does not attempt to does not go to second as he'll stay at first base. His base running rating is only a three with the four coming up. We'll see a pinch hitter for Van Gorder. Reds will go to the bench. Let's see who they're going to bring on. And I can bring on pretty much anybody. And they will go with Tony Perez. 328 average. He will come up to bat. Tony Perez against Gossage. Oster on it first. Infield halfway. There is still no strat. Red still in runner safe mode. Gossage will pitch to Perez. A double and an error. Gossage can't believe it. Of course, that run will be unearned. Here's the pitch from Gossage. And that's a 6-3. It's a blank. Perez gets the swing. 2-1. Ground ball back to Gossage. Will this do it? Perez is a 2-4-5. Perez hitting from the right side, so the second baseman is pivot, which is Flannery, minus one of four. A one to four, this ball game is over. 
It's a two, and it is. Gossage throws to second. Nice play by Flattery. Pumps once, pumps twice. Throws to first. That's your game. Padres knock out the Reds tonight. Four to two. And actually, the ball, actually, it's an extra one because the ball was hit back to the pitcher on a double play. So actually, it was a one to five. Doesn't matter, though. He still got it. One, four, three, double, one, four, three, double play, inning over. And that's your game. One run on one hit and an error. But it is the Padres winning tonight, four to two, and they stay alive in for the playoffs. So both teams that were facing elimination today won their games. Royals are still alive with their win over the Angels. And the Padres are alive with their win over the Reds. Don't go away. Ten-minute ticker coming up. And, of course, the final line score. For the Padres, four runs on 11 hits and one error. For the Reds, two runs on seven hits and no errors. The winning pitcher is Andy Hawkins. He gets the win. Jay Tibbs takes the loss. Goose Gossage does now pick up a save after that. So the Padres will win 4-2. to two. And now 10-minute ticker coming up. Brought to you by Fast Score Baseball of Replay Baseball. For those of you who don't know about it, check it out. The link is in my comments. <clears throat> Those teams not yet to rent to sing tragedy. Yep. Not ready to sing tragedy, are they? A four to two win by the by the Padres. So now they are still alive. Houston, however, with well, let's get to them. We'll see what happens tonight. Let's start up here. So the Padres get the win, and they stay alive with a chance to still get in the playoffs. They still may need some help. We'll see how the rest of it goes. The Reds do not clinch, and of course, they stay behind the Astros for second place. As the Astros hold second, it's now time for the 10-minute ticker. Let's see what's up. First up, is a meaningless game. Pittsburgh and the Cubs. The Pirates have a 16. And that is a 36. And they will get five runs. The Cubs have also a 16. That's a 33. And that is going to be five runs as well. So that is extras. Pittsburgh's as a minus two. As a clutch, so that's a one. The Cubs have a zero. That's a four. They will win. So the Cubs will win it six to five in extras in a meaning in the meaning in probably in the meaningless game. And the Pirates lose their 100th game. Not a good year for them. But then again, we all know the Pirates were pretty horrible in 1980. They were actually bad. That team was bad. That Pirates team was bad. Not good. Atlanta taking on the Dodgers. The Dodgers have already clinched home field throughout the entire playoffs. So the World Series will go through Dodger Stadium if necessary. The Braves have a five. And that is a 13. And that is just one run for the Braves. Dodgers have an 11. That's a 36. And that is four runs for the Dodgers. So the Dodgers now go to 103 wins, and the Braves now go to 102 losses. They were also a bad team. 
Next up, the Phillies and the Expos. This game is important, not for Montreal, because Montreal is going to win, has already clinched the National League East, but for the Phillies. A Philly loss here. <clears throat> A Philly loss here and a Mets win, Phillies are out. Phillies must win this game. Phillies, however, have a good number. That's a 23. And that is a 53. That is a good roll. And that is eight runs for the Phillies. Montreal has a six. And that is 34. And that is three runs for the Expos. So the Phillies stay alive. The Phillies are still alive. And now the and now let's see what comes up. Now we have the Astros and the Giants. I know Steeler fan waiting for this one. The Astros, they would their win, they would go to two games ahead of Cincinnati. Two games ahead of Cincinnati for second place. And pretty much a very close. We'll see what the seeding is. Remember, the scoring on the board, if there's a tie for seeding, the board game scoring will decide who gets the seed. I've decided to use that now. So, of course, here, San Diego got their sixth win on the board. Cincinnati, their sixth loss. I will use seeding to, to break tiebreakers necessary. I won't have that one game playoff or seeding. Houston taking on the Giants. They're a 10. That is a 44. That's a good. That's not a bad roll. That is a 5 for the Astros. Giants looking to upset. They have a 4. A 14 won't do it. That's going to be 1. And the Astros will win the game. So Houston goes to 88. Goes to 88, and the Giants drop to 106 losses. I just want to double check. I don't think that cleared them for a playoff. I am just want to check it, but I don't think so. Uh, 163 minus 88 minus 75. Mm. No, that does. They do, they do clinch. They do clinch. And the Houston Astros, as I double check my ratings, the Astros with that victory clinch a playoff spot they are in the playoffs they are in houston is in the playoffs with that victory they do win the padres however still are only two games back of the reds houston is playoff bound once again and right now they will hold the right now they hold the number three seed at the moment because the Mets, because the Dodgers are one, Mets are, Montreal is two. I'm sorry, the Cardinals hold the three seed at 89, and the Astros have the four seed. So right now, so the Houston Astros are in the playoffs. Now tonight, now the Mets taking on the Cardinals. I think this is a must-win game for the Mets, with the Phillies still behind them by two games. Mets have a six. And that is an 11, and that is the worst roll the Mets possibly could have gotten. That is a zero. Cardinals have a 10. And that is a 51, and they will win it five to, five to nothing as the Mets lose another game. So the Cardinals now get their 90th win, and the Mets now lose here. So the Mets still lead the Phillies by two. Anything can happen here. And that is all for your 10-minute ticker. Now let's choose tomorrow's games. Tomorrow in the American League. Now I should mention that a few teams in the American League, okay, did not play 162 games because of rainouts. The Yankees, the Blue Jays, Detroit, and Milwaukee only played 161. I will not do any extra games. It will stay that schedule. I'm not going to go to 162 games. It is what it is. So now let's take a look and see what we got. Detroit at Baltimore. Nah. 
Milwaukee at Boston. This is important. Milwaukee, Boston has a two-game lead on the Brewers for third place. And a win for the Red Sox will probably put them in. Seattle at the White Sox. No. Seattle's already clinched their playoff berth, and the White Sox are out. Oakland, Kansas City. This is an important game for the Royals, as be they are still two games back of California. Cleveland and Minnesota. Minnesota's already clinched. California, Texas. California, that is an important game, but I think we got to play the Yankees and the Blue Jays, don't we? The Yankees have a two-game lead on the Blue Jays to win the American League East. Yes, of course, I got to play Toronto in New York or New York at Toronto, so that will be the American League game. So for all you Yankee fans and all Yankee haters, it will be the Yankees and the Blue Jays from the American League. Now for the National League. <clears throat> for the National League, Cincinnati taking on the Dodgers, that is important. The Reds have need to win. The Dodgers, however, have already clinched home field throughout. Montreal taking on the Mets. Also important, the Mets need to win because the Phillies are still are still two games back of them. Pittsburgh and Philadelphia, both these two these two teams play a doubleheader. All right, Houston taking on San Diego that is also important because now for the Astros they've already clinched. The Padres need to win. Um, and then of course Atlanta, San Francisco is meaningless. The White Sox and St. Louis, and by the way, with that win by the Cardinals. They clinch the playoffs as well. St. Louis is in the playoffs. They clinch with that victory. Beating the Mets, 90 and 69, they are in. So the Cardinals clinch a playoff spot. They are now in the playoffs. So question is, which game do we play? Cincinnati Dodgers, Mets at the Mets, Montreal at the Mets, or Houston at the Padres? Tough, cl close, cl close game to choose, and I only want to play one of them. Let's take a look at the best pitching matchups. For Montreal, Bill Gellickson against Fernandez, 4 plus 8 is a 12. Houston, Bob Nepper against Thurman, 11 plus 9 is a 20. Uh, Cincinnati and Dodgers, Stuper against Valenzuela is a 17. The better pitching matchup is Gellickson and Fernandez. We are going to play the Met game. So it's going to be another New York, New York kind of day tomorrow. So it'll be Montreal taking on the Mets and the Yankees taking on the Blue Jays. And what game is going to be first? Well, I figure the Yankee-Toronto game... Uh, I figure Yankees in Toronto, that's for a division championship. If the Yankees win that game, they clinch the American League East. Toronto's got to win to stay alive. Montreal and the Mets, if the Mets win, they're going to clinch the playoffs. They're going to get into the playoffs. They're going to get into the playoffs. So at least they well, at least they believe they well, maybe not because the, the Phillies have four games to play. The Mets have three. Not entirely true. That's not entirely true. I'm going to make the Expos Mets game first, and I'll save the Yankee Blue Jays game for the feature game at night. So they'll do that. So it'll be Montreal at the Mets in the morning, Yankees at the Blue Jays at night. That'll be our games for tomorrow. So I hope you enjoyed this version of our game. Congratulations. If Steeler fan, G Puck, Tribe fan, CND Baseball TV with Tony Porter, Bob's Tabletop Sports, Philip Reynolds. Thank you. Please leave a like on your way out through the turnstiles. Be most appreciated. And we will see you guys tomorrow with more baseball action as we're in the last three days of this season, which means with tomorrow. With tomorrow being Thursday, the season will end Saturday, and the first playoff game, I will be taking a break. I will not play on Sunday. Monday will be the first playoff game of 1985.
What game that will be, we don't know yet. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay smart, stay strong. See you guys tomorrow. Padres beat the Reds tonight, 4-2. to two. Have a good one, everyone. Good night.